Welcome to Incubation 2023. We got bees and they're incubating. Them's the bees. The bees knees. We've got our temperature up to close to 30 degrees. Right around there, we got air going. I was stuck in Utah with a fuel pump that broke on my car, but I'm finally back and the team did great. And there, they're stacked, looking fantastic. So now I'm back. This is probably day three of incubation, so there's not gonna be really any two major difference here in the bee larva if I open them up, so we'll just leave them as is for right now. But with our new trays, these are awesome. You can stack them. The nice thing is that you can put the lids right on them because the mesh has just a big enough hole to let the parasites out, but not let the bees out. So we don't have to put lids on later. The bees can all, uh, the parasites can all get out and get to the black lights, which I've got to put the black lights in here right away. Day three is not too much of a concern. The parasites aren't going too crazy, but we've got to get them in right away. So here either today or Monday, just tomorrow, Sunday, um, we'll get all the black lights in and ready to go. I'm going to be starting up incubator two and three today, but this incubator one, we've got our big fans right here, running the system through the socks, drop down, do these beautiful little holes that push air directly in the gaps between each one of these trays. So these are, we call them our air trays because air can go through and get access to each of those trays, even if you stack them straight on top of each other. So looking really good, looking really good. Pretty stoked. The, we'll get the fans back turned on so the air is cycling really good. Now I'm just trying to find a remote that is working because the last remote I tried didn't work to get incubator two and three started up. So I will find one that's working and talk to you in a second. All right, now we're cooking with gas. Now we're cooking with gas. Let's look. We're gonna turn it on. We're gonna turn on the heat. Okay, now it's going to 76 degrees. We want it at something like 86 degrees. Boom. I've got to switch some of the lights around. I've got the light switches down at the each end. But now we must journey into the dark. Upon a midnight dreary while I pondered, weak and weary. Escape this world of darkness. This is a maze of beeness. To be or not to be. Look at me quoting all these poetry and famous writers. I pretend to think that I know what I'm talking about and that I'm educated. Really, I'm just a strange, strange fella. If we take a look at this whole container, we have around 1,600 gallons in here, which is 10,000 bees per gallon. So do some rough math. Uh, it's a lot of bees, lots of bees in that one container. And we'll have eight of them and we'll also be filling up the bee shop a bit too. So now that we are looking good, put my handy dandy remote control back and we're gonna turn on the fans and then we're going to report in our app that we've done inspections that we've turned it on it's beautiful and then here in just between 22 to 25 days bees start popping out and we'll keep you updated and take some videos of inspections and all that fun stuff and we'll see the different stages welcome to the incubation update i'm going to show you in here incubator one only going to be here in a second we have vapona in here which is to help us deal with parasites which we have some black lights here and you can see i don't know it's kind of hard to see but if you can see those little black bugs that is some parasites and I need to get a little pad here so I can better see. But this is why we have the black lights, is it draws the parasites out of the trays. And then we can get a count on where we're at. And then we cleaned up. But I usually put some kind of white or neon pad here so it's easy to see. And it kind of helps them be attracted to it. 
we've got a couple of black lights all around but that's what the spade Kona is for and it's not super bad for you but you don't want to breathe it in too much so we'll just grab a tray of bees here so you can kind of see kind of what's going on well we should start seeing because this is day 10 is we should start seeing a bit of development we should start seeing the the bee starting to form up inside there so you can kind of see we are getting some really nice development in there and that is going to be solid um, because it looks like we're a little bit further ahead than I was expecting which is good because the canola is further ahead than we were expecting so this one is probably a male I'll have to check but we'll get a better idea here soon as we start to hatch out all right so I just want to show you here at another black light is that we have some parasites here on the ground and you always have some and you're always trying to kill them but this is a good sign we don't have an outrageous amount of parasites but they're also dead which means that um, our vapona is working but we may need to add a little bit more vapona because you don't want the parasites to live long enough that they can get all the way out to the black light but that means they're doing damage to the bees you kind of want them to die in the tray but if they're dying if no parasites are coming out you may be overdoing the vapona and you may be killing all the parasites easily within the trays but then you may also be doing damage to the bees and so you're kind of doing this little balancing act is you just want a little bit of parasites coming out to show that you're not overdoing it but you don't want to underdo it either so it's a bit of a tricky balance for sure so I hang the vapona up on here because the air gets sucked through here and goes out that way and if we put these strips here the fumes from the vapona goes through and through these socks and then spreads it evenly throughout the container and here with incubator 3 because you can see we have a couple of parasites coming out and we're just putting the vapona in so we know it's the right time because they're starting to, to hatch out and things and so it's uh, that also helps us to know when to put vapona in when it's time to take it out is tracking all of these parasite populations okay so another trick you can do for checking parasites is you can stick a plain white piece of paper on top of one tray and this works best if you're doing them on lids so that there's um, mesh on the bottom of this uh, the tray there but then if you're seeing parasites dead on this white piece of paper that's like perfect because they're dying as they're coming out of the tray but not making it all the way to the black light but not dying before they come out of the tray which means you're overkilling them so it's working good okay so I got a couple samples for you you can see we've got a little bee in there we're starting to get antenna forming we got the darkening of the eyes my guess is this is a male just simply because it's a little more developed than the other ones males do emerge out earlier than the females but I probably wouldn't be able to tell fully until you opened it all the way up males they have a more of a rounded bum where females have more of a pointy bum and the females also have hairs on their abdomen underneath for collecting the pollen but so you can see it that's a little live bee in there just developing and forming and so they're going to continue in darkening in color but they turn start from that little white maggot kind of look and they darken and develop and it's kind of crazy that it's only been in there a couple of days 10 days and it's already turning into a, a bee so now this one this is an interesting sample see that little pinhole there that is where a parasite has eaten out so when you see these little pinholes, that means that there was parasites in this one. So that's when we're looking in trays and we can see how many of these have the pinholes. That's another way we look at for parasites. And this one, right here, you can just see there's some mold and disease, it looks like, on this one. And so that's an unhealthy looking one. So those are just some that I've sampled here. And then this one right here, this one's in a bag. And I could pull it out but you can see inside it's just like a solid almost caramel color inside that pod and what that is is what we call a pollen ball it's just that it's just no bee no egg was laid in there it's just solid pollen or food source that the mommy 
who put food in there but then sealed it and didn't actually lay an egg. So these are different things that as we're sampling we're looking for and getting counts of and trying to see what stage we're at, see the health of the bees, get live counts, all those kind of things.